In this problem, we have a polynomial function. This is a third degree equation here. And we're being told one of the zeros. Negative one is a zero of this function. And what we want to produce at the end of this is um, all of its factors. We express the function as a product of linear factors. So parentheses x plus one times something else in parentheses times something else in parentheses. So how can we do that? Well, we know that negative one is a zero. That means x equals negative one when the function equals zero. So to turn this into a factor, I could just um, add one to both sides to set that equal to zero. So I get x plus one equals zero. So I've already got part of my answer here. I know that you know somewhere near the end here, we're going to have x plus one as one of the factors oops, one, and then some other stuff. How do I get that other stuff? Well, I can't just, you know, magically factor this third degree equation. But since I do have one factor already, I could divide this by that factor. And then I'd get a quadratic. And then we could see if we could either factor the quadratic or maybe use the quadratic uh, uh, formula to, to get the, the roots uh, there. So let's try that. Let's try some polynomial long division. So I've got my x plus 1, and then I'm going to put the function underneath this bracket here and divide it. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. We've got all our powers of x here, so we don't need to put in any placeholders. So I can just get started. Uh, the first question I have is, what can I multiply x by to get x cubed? Well, that's just x squared. Then I do the multiplication. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. Then we subtract. x cubed minus x cubed, 0. Great. Negative 3x squared minus x squared is a negative 4x squared. Now we're done with the subtraction, so we bring down the next term, negative 3x, and we start the process all over again. So. What do I need to multiply x by to get negative 4x squared? And that would be negative 4x. So negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. And negative 4x times 1 is negative 4x. And then we subtract. So negative 4x squared minus a negative 4x squared is 0. Good. Negative 3x minus a negative 4x. That's like negative 3x plus 4x. That's just x. And then I bring down the 1. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is coming out just as we expected. This is a, a factor. So unless they were lying to us, we should get a result without a remainder here. And it looks like we're going to. Uh, so the next thing I have to ask is, what do I multiply x by to get x? The answer is just 1. So I put a 1 there. 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. We subtract. And we get 0, so no remainder. That's what we wanted. So I know now that my function can be written as x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 1. So one step further. Now I do have a quadratic here, and it doesn't actually look at, like it can be factored. I can't think of any of the um, factors of 1 that would add up to a negative 4. So I think I need to use the, the quadratic formula for this one. And the quadratic formula says negative b. Well, our b, which is the coefficient of the x term, is negative 4. So a negative negative 4 would be 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. That would be 16. Negative 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times a times c. And a and c are both 1. So that's just going to be minus 4. And that's all over 2 times a. A is just 1, so that's 2. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. 16 minus 4 is 8. So this is 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. And the square root of 8, well, 8 is 2 times 4. So this can be 4 plus or minus, just to show you what I'm doing with the square root of 8, it's 2 times 4. Oops, 2 times 4. I can take the square root of 4 and bring that out here as a 2. So this is 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And now we've got 
our two terms on the top both have a multiple of 2 that we can take out. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 divided by 2, that just disappears. So we get 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. So these are two more zeros of the function. What that means is x equals 2 plus the square root of 2 and x equals 2 minus the square root of 2. If I want to make factors, I need to set these equal to, to 0, so I would subtract this from both sides. What I get when I do that, I would subtract the 2 and subtract the square root of 2. I would get x minus 2 minus the square root of 2, and I would get x minus 2 plus the square root of 2. So those are my two other factors. And if we're going to uh, um, line up everything here, let's, let's do it over here where I have more room. I've got my x plus 1. That was the first factor that they'd given us. And now I've got x minus 2 minus the square root of 2 and x minus 2 plus the square root of 2. So that is how to write uh, a function as a whole series of, of factors when you're given one zero to start with.